Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about cyclic photophosphorylation reaction. So first of all, what do we mean by the term photophosphorylation? We will split this term into two parts, one is photo and the other one is phosphorylation. Photo means light and phosphorylation means adding inorganic phosphate to any substrate. So here when we add this phosphate to an ADP molecule and convert the substrate into ATP molecule, this is called as phosphorylation reaction and when this is taking place in place of in the presence of light it is called as photophosphorylation reactions so this is all which is written in the text synthesis of atp from adp and inorganic phosphate in the presence of light is photophosphorylation and let us give you a brief history that what happened in non cyclic photophosphorylation when both these photosystems that is photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 work in series it is called as non-cyclic photophosphorylation and they gain more when they work together uh, that is both ATP and NADPH are formed in this non-cyclic photophosphorylation but our topic today in this video is cyclic photophosphorylation when photosystem 1 says I want to work alone independent but will gain only ATP NADPH will not be produced in this reaction so let's start the discussion this is a diagram of NCRT. Here you could see that we are talking about photosystem 1. Therefore, this denotes the reaction center. The reaction center of light harvesting complex of photosystem 1. So this is denoted by P700 just because it has an absorption peak of 700 nanometer wavelength of light. Whereas photosystem 2 which came second in the class by scoring 680 marks in the test has an absorption peak of 680 nanometer and is represented, represented as P680. That is not a part of our discussion right now. We are discussing cyclic photophosphorylation where photosystem 1 is only taking action. So here the chlorophyll A molecule that is the reaction center will accept the light energy sent by the sunlight. And would excite the electrons and send it to an electron acceptor through antenna. We know that this light harvesting complex is made up of reaction center, a single molecule of chlorophyll A, and hundreds of pigments except chlorophyll A as antenna. These antenna will send this electron to an electron acceptor which has a higher redox potential. Now, when these electrons move downhill through electron transport system which is made up of cytochromes particularly cytochrome B and F they lead to the formation of ATP and when these will these electrons pass through the electron transport system these electrons are handed back to photosystem 1 reaction center then again this reaction center would accept light and would excite these electrons send it back to this electron acceptor this acceptor will send again to the electron transport system and again ATP formation will occur. Therefore, the electron is being cycled between this reaction center of photosystem 1 to electron acceptor through electron transport system back to the reaction center of photosystem 1. Therefore, it is forming a cycle and therefore we call it as cyclic photophosphorylation reaction. Now, let us know where and when does this occur. We already know that the reaction center of photosystem 2 would absorb maximum light at 680 nanometer only and when they want to work together like let me show you we have a photosynthetically active radiation which is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer of light so for both the friends photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 to work together they should have a same compatibility we know that photosystem 1 is a topper of class and understands the light of every wavelength up to 700 nanometer but photosystem 2 does not have the same knowledge and therefore accepts the wavelength of light only up to 680 nanometer therefore photosystem 2 says to photosystem 1 that hey friend if you want to work with me you need to work in this range of light only which is from 400 to 680 only and if the light beyond 680 nanometer comes 
I want function you can do it yourself as cyclic photophosphorylation. So therefore, if the light of wavelength beyond 680 nanometer is given to the plant, then only cyclic photophosphorylation will occur in which only ATP is produced, no NADPH produced. Understood? And also that we know that chloroplast is made up of membrane system and stroma. Membrane system is further made up of grana and stroma lamellae. When thylakoids are placed over each other, they form a stalk which is called as grana. And when a thylakoid connects two grana together, that is called as stroma lamellae. And friends, stroma lamellae does not have, the thylakoid of the stroma lamellae does not have photosystem 2. Then of course in those stroma lamellae, only photosystem 1 is present and their cyclic photophosphorylation is the only option left. And when light of wavelength beyond 680 nanometer would be present, then also only cyclic photophosphorylation will occur because our photosystem 2 cannot function beyond 680 nanometer. Then only photosystem 1 will function and cyclic photophosphorylation will occur. Note that lamellae, la the word lamella or thylakoid is the same thing. Lamellae or thylakoid of grana contains both photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. But the lamellae or say thylakoid of stroma or say stroma lamellae contain only photosystem 1 and also lacks NADP reductase enzyme which was, was used in the last step where that drug mafia came in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So with this we have completed the discussion of cyclic photophosphorylation. Friends you need to remember that there is no production of NADPH and here only photosystem 1 is functional and since the electrons are cycled between the reaction center of photosystem 1, the electron acceptor and the electron transport system Therefore, it is forming a cycle and we call it a cyclic photophosphorylation reaction. It occurs in two conditions. When the light is beyond 680 nanometer wavelength, that is photosystem 2 says, friend, I cannot work with you now. And the other thing is, in stroma lamellae, just because the thylakoids present in stroma contain only photosystem 1. So how can they work together with photosystem 2? There also only cyclic photophosphorylation reactions will take place. And with this, we have completed the entire discussion in detail of cyclic photophosphorylation. Hope you like this video. Do check my other content also, friends. And I'll upload these notes on my Telegram channel.